Good morning. Good morning. Happy, beautiful Sunday morning out here in God's perfect creation. My happy place. I love being outside, especially this time of year. I'd much rather be outside than inside. All right, here we go. I see some people watching. All right. How's everyone doing? <clears throat> we decided we'd change the scenery up for you a little bit. So, this will all work out until bees start coming or... <laughs> the neighbors come out to say neighbors hello. Neighbors come out to say hello or start shooting, shooting guns or the donkey starts um, talking to us. Good morning, Jennifer. Nice to see you on here this morning. All right, we're filling up now. Good morning. I think as the days get prettier, I wonder how, uh, yeah, I will be able to keep recording inside. It's just too perfect out here. I tried to fix the headspace, and, but that sky is just so pretty this morning. Nice to look at. Good morning, Brian. How are you today? Is Sarah with you today or? She ran off again. <laughs> I mean, check the light. How dark uh, are we? Can you guys? I know. See what us? what is the what's the lighting look like? We've we've been trying to fix some things on our end. Good morning, Dorothy. Great idea. Love the outside. Yes, girl. Why why um tamper with any other backdrop? We'll just let God do the backdrop this morning. Let him paint that for us. Good morning, Kayla. How are you today? Hope you've all had a good week. Brian says he's enjoying his day off. Sarah is here too. Well, good morning, Sarah. So wonderful to have both of you with us. Thank you, Jennifer. We both look beautiful. Well, good. Maybe the outdoors will help our... I strive to be beautiful. Yeah, will help us look better, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I said, I don't know. We get outside and the Sun comes overhead. Y'all be really able to see all these silver highlights. Mine's wet, so you won't <laughs> see mine. We'll just we're just gonna rock them. Silver highlights. Good morning, Bart. Oh, how are you guys this week? How's everybody doing? I hope you've had a good week and enjoying the outside. Good morning, Sarah. Sarah Langford, it's a beautiful morning, great view. Yes, it is. I, I'm wondering if you have a, a nice view where you are. If you're at the farm, I'm sure it's just amazing. Good. Dorothy the garden, says the, yes, the garden oh, yeah. is right there. Can you see it? No, you got to look. I can't. It's right there. It's right here. There's a glare. So, okay. Yep. It's right there. Yes, we worked very hard. Well, Tim worked hard downstairs yesterday. We've still got that renovation project going on. and <sighs> Four months worth. Alex and Ella and I worked outside. Um, so, yeah, we got all the vegetables in the ground yesterday, except for we've got some blueberry bushes that we've got to plant today. Um, but all of the vegetables are in the ground, and I haven't walked out there, but... It looks from here like everything is still green and, and perky and standing up. So that's a very good sign. <laughs> good morning, Gail. Good to see y'all outside. Frankie says it's a beautiful day to be outside. Are y'all in the garden? Very close to the garden. Yeah, very close. That's why I was showing Oh, you were showing Gail. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm behind, Gail. Good morning, Jeremy. Sarah says, not at the farm, in the living room. Well... That's okay. You can still have a good view out your window, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah. It's just, I don't know, we might just, I might get lost out here in nature today. I might have to get Tim to carry on. <laughs> I love to just sit and just, like, take it all in. I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm just, this is my, my element. I hear a bee. I actually got a we were talking about that this morning and I had a, there was a bee in the garden yesterday and the kids and I were trying to look it up at breakfast to, to see what kind it was. They kept saying, mom, it was probably a yellow jacket, but it was really, it was, it didn't look like a yellow jacket. It was bright yellow and I thought maybe it was a pollinator bee. 
I don't even know if that's a such thing. So we were trying to research it this morning to see because it was super, super yellow on the on the back end of it. Maybe he was and covered in pollen. Maybe he was covered in pollen. I thought about that, but he was just buzzing around, and so I he was near me, and I like I had my gloves on my hand, of course. And I tapped on the ground, and I was like trying to calm him down. I said, "Shh, it's okay, you know." I, t I talk to things. I, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna expose how crazy and nerdy I am, but. Um, you know, I just, I just figure, you know, if I'm calm around bees and, and birds and, you know, that they'll, they'll be calm, right? So I was tapping on the ground trying to, you know, shh, it's okay, I'm your friend. And that little bee landed on my glove. And Ella was like, mom, yeah, that's what they do. They land and they sting right you. They that's, sting you. that's, that's how they said. attack. <laughs> I said, well, I had on the glove. I wasn't worried. But it, it didn't look like it was trying to sting. It looked like it was saying hello. So uh, so I just, I invited it to stay in my garden as long as it would pollinate all the For things. Sure. And um, and make it grow and be beautiful. <laughs> the bee whisperer. That's me until I get stung. Look, I got stung actually right here in this very spot where we're sitting. We had some chairs stacked up. Some like, um, like those plastic lawn chairs stacked up and I was cleaning them and I guess I just never knew that a good idea would be to look underneath the chairs before you start cleaning them especially if they've sat in one spot for a long time so um, I didn't do that and I turned them over and started spraying and there was a yellow jacket nest somewhere in that area I don't know but I got attacked and stung by about seven yellow jackets and it was on, I believe it was on a Sunday afternoon. I remember he was taking a nap in our That hasn't happened bedroom. in a really long this was, time. Oh yeah, this was way before children. We had probably just moved here. And our dog next door heard me screaming, Max. He's no longer with us. He was a sweet dog. He come running over and was barking and was just like, you know, getting at those bees. And I really believe he kept me from getting stung more than seven times. But I remember running around the front of the house and beating on the window for Timothy to help me. As I, I, the front door was locked and I was running, trying to get away from them. And I, the only door that I had access to was where they were. So yeah, it was a scary time. I, I'm not allergic, so I made it through. Jeremy wants to know how many visits have you made to Hobby Lobby? One. One. I stood in a nice long line for it. It wasn't bad at all though. I got in there and um, yeah, I just, I was so overwhelmed with joy after being inside, I wanted to hug all the employees, but I refrained myself. Jim says the video keeps. Does anybody else having any problems with the video feed? Oh, no. wonder if it's because we're outside. Maybe it's we're too far away from, I don't know, we, we could turn the internet off and probably fix that. Um, but yeah, I have refrained from going to Hobby Lobby. I've got to save some for the rest of you. <laughs> I'll be back this week, though. Of course you so will. So happy that they are open. It really just gives me hope. <laughs> oh, it is essential for my business. <laughs> um, good morning, Robin. Okay, everybody else says it's working well. All right, we will continue on then. Well, Jim, I hope it works for you. We, oh, there we go. There's a neighbor. One neighbor is, is out. And if we'd have been on the porch. Y'all would have caught an you extra gotten, conversation. would have gotten to meet neighbor <laughs> Bill. He is lots of fun. <laughs> neighbor Bill. That's a funny thing. <laughs> As this thing continues, we'll just we'll introduce you to our friends. <laughs> I can make like cameo appearances and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Kind of like We're the old work. shows back in the day where this yeah. mailman shows up. And... <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, today it will have to be the meter man because <laughs> we're sitting here staring at the meter. <laughs> oh my goodness, that that is just all that you too from the funny. Road. Oh, that's right. They do that now. That was back in the olden days. Oh, Brian, what are you saying? Don't you have to stand in line to go to Hobby Lobby? Why? I was in Target with at least three hundred people yesterday. Because Hobby Lobby is special, I guess. Well, Target, last time I was at Target, they were counting people at the door. Where they are not counting people is good old Lowe's. Home Depot is. <laughs> Home Depot's counting. 
Home Depot, Depot is one way in. Kind of hard in. to even get in there. One way in and two one ways, way out. Uh, two ways out. Oh, is it two ways out now? Lumber okay. or landscaping. Oh, okay. Or a gardening area. Yeah. But um, Home Depot, they were on top of it in Target too. They and they were cleaning the the carts and stuff at Target. Oh, Hobby Lobby's cleaning carts too. Hobby Lobby follows the room, rules. That's right, Jennifer. They follow the rules. That's why they're blessed. <laughs> That's they're and, and I walked in and they had beautiful instrumental worship music playing. It's just God smiles on Hobby Lobby, I'm sure. But no, Bart says Lowe's isn't. Yes, I know they're not. Lowe's is like a free for all. It was, and I hate to say that. I don't want to. I don't want to get them in trouble. But um, <laughs> you know that. I mean, they have the social distancing markers, like, wait in line here, you know, but, you know, they're definitely crowded. <laughs> I'm a rule follower, too. <laughs> Jeremy's shaking. Ah, Jeremy's, gosh, my hand is, like, really close in that angle. Ooh. <laughs> you all right? No, I'm all right. <laughs> Ooh, she got in I'm there. I'm not all right. Oh, if you can't have fun, why get out of bed? That's what I say. <laughs> I've never heard you say that. I'm making it known today. Uh -huh. All right. Well, how's everybody in the world of live streaming doing? <laughs> I got one of those squeezy hearts. Did you see that pop up? I the think new, I, no, the that new was emoji? A, it was a, somebody holding a coffee mug. Uh-uh. Yeah, it was. It, it was an emoji look. with a coffee mug. They don't have an emoji with a coffee mug. It was too. Are you sure? What? No, it's the pop. Somebody it up hit the hit the emoji with a coffee mug. No, it's not a coffee mug. It's a heart. It's a coffee mug. It looks like it's squeezing a heart. Mm -mm. It's, a, it's a emoji holding a coffee All mug. Right, see, they're on a delay. Okay, okay see. See, he's holding a coffee it's mug. It's not a coffee mug. It's a heart. He's squeezing his coffee mug. <sighs> okay. Well, I could actually relate to that one better, probably. <laughs> Why can't, can we get a two emojis hugging each other? <laughs> well, then you got, if you do that, then the you got to build like Does that open level. up, does that open up a can right there? It's a heart. I still think Actually, it's a it looks like a mug. whale. A tail. <laughs> okay. Well. Oh. There we go. It's, oh, it is squeezing a heart. It's okay. squeezing a heart. Well, it's a new emoji. I thought it was holding a coffee mug. Jennifer says, doing well. If quarantine continues much longer, we will have a brand new house. Haha, <laughs> lots of quarantine renovations. No kidding. Isn't that cool, though? That's neat that you can get all that done. I think I've been bit by something. Uh-oh. Wasn't uh -oh. me. I didn't bite yeah, you. Yeah, something is biting me. Oh, goodness. Oh, white mosquitoes. It's an ant. Oh, it's not an ant. Hey, people, says Gerald. Hello, Gerald. How's life over at the Target? It's a heart. It's a heart, but Tim actually, wants coffee. I don't, you want coffee? No. He wouldn't actually, drink my I coffee. don't drink coffee. All right, I'm going to have to. I can't deal with it. Honey, it's okay. It's in your head. No, it's not in my head. It's in my arm. Two little bites. <laughs> I'm not a big coffee drinker. I'll have one with her every once in a while, but by the yeah. time I get done with it, it's just hot cream and sugar. It really is. Yeah, he like. I have to buy him his own special creamer because he'll just take mine and like fill his cup with the creamer and then put a few drops of coffee in it. And that's not it's cool. No, just, I don't. I don't like <laughs> I need coffee. My creamer. I don't, and I have mostly coffee and just a little bit of creamer. So if he ever grabs mine by mistake, oof. Yeah, Ugh. he doesn't like that. Tastes too much. too much like coffee. You know what we don't have out here is a what? Well, you got your phone, so we'll have mm -hmm. to keep up with our time out here, won't we? My coffee has to look like milk and taste like sugar, Brian. Mm. That's that's Tim. Yep. That's how he likes it too. Well, it's good to hear that everyone's doing well, renovating. I guess some of you may be going back to work this week. We, uh, I know my sister-in-law's um, office is opening back up, so people are going back to work. Stores are opening. That's a good thing, in my opinion. Be safe and. Get back open. Gerald says, busy, but thankfully I'm not there. Fixing the kids pull up for them. Well, I'm glad you have a day off, Gerald. Wonderful. Enjoy that with your children. And a pool sounds wonderful. Yes, yeah, we so it's been like 84 today. I no, think. we were just talking about a pool yesterday. 
Gotta get our pools up and going. Robin says, I'm trying to watch grandson stay with me last night. Aw. Well, hello, Mr. Lucas. Hope you are having fun with your grandma. I don't know what her, what's her grandma name? She'll probably tell us. I don't know. I'm there's sure so, it's not grandma. It's there's so not. many of them now. Probably not. Robin's too. G -G -nay -nay. Robin's a young, a young grandma. Yeah. All right. Well, we have been covering you all in our prayers this week. Um, and the I list don't know. is on the refrigerator. Yeah, the list so. is on the refrigerator, but I think I can remember it. I'm not sure if Jim is still with us, but wanted to check on his uncle. <laughs> We've been praying for him. Ryan it says, David. oh, are we supposed to be going? No, it was news to me too, Ryan. <laughs> oh, kidding. My kids can tell you that they are quarantined. They are itching to get out and go places. Our little Alex, he he's our introvert. Well, I don't know. He's Yeah, he is. Yeah, I, he's a homebody. He's definitely a homebody. Um, Ella is not. No. She's an anywhere but homebody. Anywhere but home. And uh, he was... <laughs> Oh, I can't get a handle on your Trump over there. <laughs> <laughs> Trump hair. Trump hair don't care. Here you go. I just, I get my t-shirt ideas while we're having mm -hmm. our Sunday Trump hair class. don't care. <laughs> just look, look for that in the new Father's Day line. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about prayer requests. We were talking about introverts, actually. We were mm -hmm. talking about how Alex is ready to get out and go somewhere. Yeah. Pool time today, Robin says, yes, indeed. Brian says, I've been working even more than normal, no quarantine for me. Yeah, and that is the case with a lot of our essential workers, right? Definitely. Get it done. More. Help the people. Gerald says, I'm grandpa. Don't need a Gen X young grandparent <laughs> name. <laughs> I like it. That's what I'm going to be, him. too. Yeah. My dad is G-Paw. We kind of cooled it up for him. <laughs> yeah by the time we have grandkids you know that will be the cool thing again you know all these older names are coming back around so it'll be cool to be called grandmother and grandfather <laughs> I maybe. agree <laughs> maybe maybe I agree but yes back to prayer requests I don't think Jim's on here anymore but hopefully his uncle is doing better and um, I think we were praying for John's family. I don't see Michelle on here. Um, continue to pray for Mr. Hopper. And it was someone else who we were praying. Chuck Curtis. Been praying for him. Last I heard from Regina, he was moving along, making progress. Still going to, you know, be a, a long road for them, but he was doing well. Brian says, My mom has. The most old grandma name. My odd. kids call her, oh, Odd. Bunny. <laughs> bunny. That's cute. I like Bunny. That's sweet. Aww. Well, does anybody have any prayer requests this week? We'll go ahead and get started. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but, um, yeah, if, if you, uh, if you hang in there with us long enough, we do actually get to a lesson and God's Word. We do like to talk and fellowship at the beginning and uh, do our time of connecting. We make it as close to our Sunday school class as possible. And this yeah. is exactly how we do things um, in our Sunday school class in real life. But, you know, if this doesn't interest you, you can fast forward to about the, what do you say? 20 minute mark. 20 minute mark. <laughs> Catch it from there. <laughs> Sometimes 25. Um, and also, while I'm on that subject, I want just to say how much we appreciate Joyce and Mike and Monty and all the ones that are at church every time there is service that are taking care of our social media, mm -hmm. our live streaming. Um, they have just, they've talked about working extra. They are working overtime to be able to get all that done. And I just talked to Joyce this morning and I was just telling her how much, you know, we appreciate her doing this. She takes all these Facebook lives, all the groups that meet during the week, and she's the one that's putting them on YouTube. So if you have a minute 
please let her know how much you appreciate her and thank her for, for such a um, well done job. She is mm -hmm. rocking it. She's doing a good job getting all this put up for us and um, and put on YouTube. And I know a lot of people are watching this on YouTube. So hello to everybody on YouTube. We appreciate you joining in and taking time out of your not so busy days. <laughs> busy days be, doing home and projects. Right. To be with us. We hope that you're being encouraged and blessed. And it is our prayer that once those doors of the house of God open back up that you will join us in real time in Sunday school because we um, we really it really is a time that we can connect with one another and uh, you get to meet new people and just get to fellowship with people that are most likely in the same season of life as you and that's that's very encouraging that's where we can really you know create bonds and and um, and make it through these days because it's sometimes it's really hard well, not sometimes, all the time. It's really hard to try to get through things on your own. It's good to have a support system and a group of people that you can depend on and, and pray with. You know, we cover one another in prayer. We're checking on each other during the week. And um, I think this has increased that. You know, I, I think right. being able to do it this way has really increased our, um, our bond with each other. You know, because for the first time in history, we are all experiencing so something at once. You know, yeah. we're... We're all going through this together, and so it's, it's, um... Well, everybody understands everybody's yeah. frustration, yeah. struggle, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's For right. For sure. So... Any other prayer requests? Let me get started. Good morning, Carnesha. Oh, it's so good to see you on here. We've missed you and Lester the last couple of weeks. Well, on the live, you maybe you're catching us later, but we've missed you on the live version. All right, we'll give you a couple minutes. Good morning, Michelle. Just woke up. That's all right, honey. Sleep in as much as you can. Brian says, any guess when we'll be allowed to go back to church? This was originally supposed to be a couple weeks shut down to flatten the curve. Yes. Um, we, no word yet. We don't know. We don't know. We know that they're already um, discussing some ways where we can come together that might not look the same. I feel like I'm going to sneeze, which I I feared would happen coming outside early in the morning. But um, we'll see. It's yeah, we'll only see. Only time will tell how things will progress. That's right. I guess we've got to open our state back up first. <laughs> you know, in businesses and. I, from what I understand, tomorrow is the day the governor is going to address his plan for opening businesses. So, we'll see. Just taking it one day at a time. But, Brian, I really hope it's soon. Me too. Is there any other prayer requests? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think, right. I think well, let's we'll just pray. pray. All right. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day of life you've given us, for just your kindness and goodness that you've shown to us, Lord. Even though we don't always seem to notice it and some things we take for granted, God, Lord, I pray that you just bring notice to these things that you do for us, God. We thank you for it, God. We ask you, Lord, to touch over all the special requests, Father, all the things that people are going through, the situations, God. We know that you have the strength and the power, Lord, to to move in those situations, Lord. Let us also uh, speak when we need to speak, but also be silent when we need to be silent, God. And we thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us, and we just love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Was it good? Yeah. It is good. It is good. good. I'm going to sit it down for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got anything before we get started? No. Okay, good. So yesterday morning, I was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday morning. The days run together. Yeah, Who they knows? run together after a while. Yesterday morning, I woke up with a, a verse. When I, and when I say verse, I always wake up with these book, chapter, and verse. But I don't know what the verse says. You know, I won't say always, but it happens to me sometimes. And you know, I'm just kind of like, okay, Lord, are you trying to show me something in particular? And, and usually, it leads up to. You know, a little bit of a Bible study or, you know, something for me to learn. So hopefully um, what I got for you guys today will be something for you to learn from, something for you to draw from. You know, like the word says, we're growing grace and knowledge 
uh, of him. Um, so we're going to talk about bearing fruit today. The verse that, that was brought to my mind yesterday was Matthew twelve thirty three, And I'll let Jennifer do all my reading today. <laughs> Sword drill. I know. I better be good then because I don't have no one else to lean on. All right. Matthew twelve thirty three. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. So, in speaking of fruit, and that's why one reason why we got outside today, we want to talk about fruit and bearing fruit and growing and how that works. And, and, and what the Lord brought to my mind, there were four ways that, that we maximize the bearing of fruit um, in the in the real trees, and of course we're gonna you know I'm gonna take you from a biblical view of it. Um, so the four ways that we do, we're gonna start with the first one, which is light, because um, we gotta have sunlight. You know, plants mm -hmm. won't grow, yeah. trees won't grow without That's sunlight right. when they won't produce anything without sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go to John eight verse twelve, and we're gonna talk about what we get our sunlight from. As a plant, we get it from the S U N. As a believer, we get it from the S O N. John 8. 12. John 12? 8. 12. 8. 12. Okay, then. <laughs> then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And we know that, you know, that, tree, that trees praying fruit have to have a light. They have to have mm -hmm. a light. If they're a tree planted in a place like Alaska where it's dark yeah. for 30 days it won't thrive it won't produce fruit it won't do anything right. so we have to have light in our life that's the most important thing mm -hmm. we have you know yes that's true you're right <laughs> you want me to I'll, elaborate I'll also see if you have anything else to say all right so the next thing we have to have in our life is water and we're going to go to John 4:14 4, for that Now, obviously, we know that plants, trees, anything living must have water. Well, and, and I, I can comment if you want me to comment on the sun based on plants. Yeah, I want you to give a comment. Okay, uh, he wants the gardener's take on it. Mm -hmm. the, the plants always turn toward the sun. They always do. In the morning, it, my little seedlings that were in our garden window, um, they were... Even the ones that weren't completely against the window, the ones in the back, were trying to reach over top of the ones that were against the window for the sunlight. They were all drawn for the sun. They're always bent toward the sun. Sunflowers, sunflowers grow like this. They grow with their face toward the sun. On a cloudy day, a sunflower is doing this. And that's a great, yeah. great thing to add in there, uh -huh. you know, that, that we should be reaching toward yeah. the sun. And without the sun, it's just not... It's a gloomy yeah. day. It's a gloomy day without the sun. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, I feel gloomy without the sun. Now, yeah. I do like rainy days. There are some, sometimes rainy days well, we need are very comforting. Too. Yes, and we're going to get to that, right? But that sun, something about that sun. And we, you know, here's another good lesson about the sun is on the, on the physical side, we need vitamin D. Vitamin D is actually an emotional... Um, vitamin like it it helps with our emotions it makes you feel better it gives you energy um it's an antidepressant mm -hmm. supplement okay there we go now we'll move on to water <laughs> where okay john four fourteen. is that what you said yep john four fourteen. okay but whoever drinks of the wa water that i shall give will never thirst but the water that i shall give will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life and as we know in the bible the water is always um, a, a symbol of the holy spirit yes. so the holy spirit is the watering of if you can picture yourself as a tree mm -hmm. producing fruit or trying to produce fruit mm -hmm. or wondering how to produce fruit obviously the first thing we're going to need is the light we need yeah. the sun we need jesus in our lives we need water we need the holy mm -hmm. spirit who's going to lead god direct us um, in the Bible, you know, he's called the comforter. He's called the helper. Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely need the water, the yeah. teacher. We need the water in our life. Yeah. Well, the, you need a good balance, right? In that the water and the sun working together is really what produces the fruit. If you don't believe me, look at your grass. <laughs> 
to be beautiful sunny days and that grass looks like hey you know what I can get away with another day or two of mowing it you know it looks like it hasn't really grown that much but you let it rain just a little bit it doesn't even have to rain a lot let it rain one afternoon and let the sun come out the next day and by that evening Neha. it's time to mow again <laughs> And so, yeah, the same is true. Sometimes those little plants, even though they've had a lot of sunlight, um, they will start to, to dry up if they don't have water. They need that washing of the water, just like we need that washing of the water and the Holy Spirit. And we need that washing of the Word in our life. You know, that it's just all balanced. It's all balanced. Absolutely. The third thing we need is pruning and these are these last two i'm going to go through are are the things that are not as fun and bright and cheery so the, to be able to produce good fruit we need pruning and pruning is cutting back of either the dead branches or even sometimes the branches that are producing yeah. to mm -hmm. make it produce more so yeah. let's go to john 15 2. And this is an interesting verse to, you know, when we look at our lives, we look at our bearing fruit um, to how that God prunes us sometimes, even when it seems like we're doing the right thing mm -hmm. and heading in the right direction. Go ahead and read. Okay. John 15, 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. So in this verse, we see that God is going to help us not only get rid of the branches mm -hmm. that aren't producing, but even the ones that are producing, the yeah. areas of our lives where we are producing fruit, mm -hmm. sometimes they get cut as well to yeah. help us produce more fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's, it, it was amazing. I could tell the story <laughs> about our tree up the hill here. And, uh, back, what was it? September, September of 2018. 18. We had a big storm. Our gutters were getting filled up by this tree dropping all these little whatever them little things are in our gutter and it stops our gutters our, our basement flooded and um so we were, had a friend over and we were working on it my dad and it was a bunch of us here working on it we ended up cutting the tree way back I mean, they didn't it, tell me that they were going we to didn't like... tell her and i mean we <laughs> cut it it was basically it was a bad a, haircut a stump with a few a limbs on with it. a bad haircut it was a stump with a few <laughs> limbs on it and jennifer just oh my oh, goodness she went crazy it on broke that. my heart because it, it was, was a pretty tree it was a really strong tree and i kid you not within <laughs> within nine months that tree turned out to be bigger than it was mm -hmm. before um, it actually needed that pruning yeah. and you know sometimes we need that to grow and yeah. to produce fruit Just it's not like a fruit tree but that little rose bush if we were closer we could show them remember that rose bush back mm -hmm. last fall i cut it down i mean to the ground and you even made the comment honey i don't are you sure you're supposed to cut that it back that far and i was really having a day where i was taking out frustration <laughs> i remember Granny was in the hospital, and she had been telling me, you know, you got to prune that rose bush, and I had missed it the year before, so I was pruning it, you know, and I had, I took it way down, and after I did it, I thought, oh no, did I mess it up, did I take it too far, but it's beautiful right now, it's, it's not like huge like it was, but it's got more blooms on it right now than I think it's had in two years, it's one of those knockout roses, which my mom says you can't kill, so... Hey, you know, maybe. but yeah, we have to, it, it's so true. It's true. It will, you will bear more fruit and you know, that printing part yeah, as think a it, yeah, Christian think it, is, oh. yeah, well, think about even the tree itself, you know, picture yourself <laughs> as a tree and somebody's coming at you with something sharp like, to cut I'll, pieces of you off. But I didn't do anything wrong, but right. I was being a good tree. Right. I was, I was branching. <laughs> I was doing what I was supposed to do. Yeah. But here comes somebody with these blades. So mean? <laughs> cutting pieces of me off and this i'm like this is not well, fair <laughs> why are you cutting pieces of me off yeah. it just it doesn't make any sense you no. know and uh you know but the, i'm just saying things that we would say during that prudent right, process but the the, the master gardener oh, the one the that watches gardener. out for our soul yes um knows what he's yes, doing he and does. even the parts that we feel like we're, we're doing well or yeah. we've got a hold of this yeah. or you know, that branch is, looks really green and, and it's alive, yeah. you know. I'm doing that, a good job over here. 
it's yeah. I mean, that's, he knows yeah. what to cut and when and when. Yeah. You know, that's the other part about when you do pruning. It's not always about what areas to cut. It's also when time of year to cut because there are times when you can prune yeah. trees and plants and it's not the right thing. You can kill it. Yeah. Um, but there are a there are specific times in you know in the plant's life. And again, I'm giving kind of a almost like a parable here where I'm talking about being a tree, but. In our own lives, there are times in our lives when there are things that have to be cut out, yeah. even though it may not seem like the right time to us. That's mm -hmm. the gardener's job to make yep. that decision and know the times and the seasons to make those cuts. That's right. And, you know, I think that sometimes we, we might feel like, yeah, we are doing a good job in this area. Why do I have to go through this? Well, a lot of times that pruning, it is for humility. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have to be humbled. We have to um, be put back in check, and the master gardener has to say, Hey, look here. Chicky. <laughs> I can't think of another word. Chicky. Um, you notice all these, these chicken and rooster um, symbols that, I'm, that I've been making the last few weeks. Uh. Sarah pointed that out last week. Um, yeah, you know, this, you, you think you don't need me. You know, you're, you're really. Uh, <laughs> See, she like that. <laughs> you know, you think you have it all together here. I'm, I'm going to have to remind you that I am the master gardener. I'm the one that's in control. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to to do some pruning. We're going to have to cut that back because we, we need you to stay humble, you know. And I need you to stay humble. So I think that's, you know, that can be part of it too. I, another, and just using this analogy, sometimes... Um, something in the garden can be doing so good that it overshadows the plants around it and that's why it has to be pruned mm -hmm. to give the other plants around it more sunlight well that was good you know i didn't even good. think about that like so that that's something too sometimes we are we are silenced for a bit because we're we're taking too much of something that belongs to someone else mm -hmm. you know or should be shared so absolutely that and too yeah and that's all, and again it goes back to you know trusting the gardener as as the plant trusting in the gardener to make the right moves for you you know uh, mm -hmm. I think trust keeps coming up in these yeah um yes in our classes lately I, you know i know it's something that we all need to think about but Trusting the master gardener to make the right moves yeah. at the right times and make the right cuts at the right time. Yeah, and, that's right. Uh, knowing that he knows you know, his creation. He knows his creation. He knows mm -hmm. that, um, you know, everything that he's doing is going to work out for our benefit, mm -hmm. even if we can't see yeah. the benefit of it, or if it's painful, or if it's just, you yeah. know, not what we want. But again, like I said, if you can just keep continue to picture yourself the tree and somebody coming at you with a blade, I mean, you're yeah. like, whoa. Well, and Brian just said, you know, it can be difficult at times because you can't see the end result. Right. And I think that's what it was for me with that yes, tree. Yes, that was exactly what it was. Yeah, was that I was like, oh, no, it will never be what it once what it was. was. And it wasn't. It was better. It was and ridiculously so, you know, better. Yeah. It got big over a nine-month period. It got yeah. bigger than it had ever been. Yeah. And now I've got to cut it back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's part of it. You know, we're in a we're in an, a situation right now where we think, oh my goodness, will things ever be what they once were? We are in a huge pruning process right now, you know, and um, you know we just have to trust, like you said, we have to trust the master gardener that he he can he can make it better. He's gonna get the glory. He is going to get the glory out of this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And the last of the four things I felt like God had told me that we needed. Of course, first for bearing fruit is light. Mm -hmm. We need water. We need pruning. And the last thing we need is fertilizer. Yes. And I'm going to take this a little bit different route than oh, some goodness. of you are thinking here. So Get your let's, mask out. let's go to Luke chapter 13, <laughs> verses 6 through 9. one Daniel used this morning, I believe. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I heard him in Luke. All right. Luke chapter 16. Chapter 13. 13. So I'm wrong. He was in chapter 16. <laughs> Keep up, honey. 13 verse. Verse 6 through 9. 6 through 9. He also spake this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look for three years. I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. 
cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit well, but if it not, after that, you can cut it down. So, in the King yeah. James Version, in verse 8, uh, um, and I'm going to get a little crude here, but in, in verse 8 it says, Till I shall dig about it and dung it. So, I want to bring two points oh, out from this part. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> two parts out from this verse is... Um, Did you just say dung? Dung it, yeah. Dung, which is poop. Can you dung it? Can you dung it, yeah. Which is poop, basically. Um, so what I want to talk about, two different things on this, you know, just briefly, is um, being careful who you let around your tree and what yeah. they're putting in your ground. Mm -hmm. um, and then realizing, you know, in this verse, um, when it talks about dung, and I'm, like I said, I'm going to get crude here for a second. You know, we go through a lot of crap in our life. <laughs> and picture, your, outside, picture, your, you <laughs> picture yourself <laughs> as a tree. And somebody's coming at you, it smells bad, it looks terrible, and you're just, I mean, as a tree, you're like, oh, no, what, no, get this away from me. This is, oh, I don't it's want stinky. To, I don't want this around me. Yeah. It, it, you know, it lays around you, and you're like, ooh, mm -hmm. I, it's, this crap stinks. But you know what? <laughs> a lot of times, the crap we go through in our lives is actually used as fertilizer yeah. in our lives to mm -hmm. help us produce more mm -hmm. fruit. Um, mm -hmm. You know the most character, the the faith building. You know, and yeah. that's a, that's Gosh. if we are allowing the crap to be put on us, or are we trying to block it? No, I don't want to deal with this. I don't. I'm going to go somewhere else. You know, um, Lord, take this away. And I know sometimes there are attacks from the enemy where we need the Lord to to take these attacks away. But sometimes there are things that God allows in our lives, crap, for uh -huh. lack of a better word, yeah. um, that need to be put in our lives, that need to be thrown into our soil to help cultivate us, to help us bear more fruit. Yeah. You know, it goes so along with true. the pruning. It's not yes. it's not a happy process. It's not an enjoyable mm -hmm. process, but it's a process yeah. that works. Yeah. Um, so. Yes, it is. Works really well. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. And the more worms you have in there, the better. Yep. The worms are pretty crude, too. You know? <laughs> they might be slimy, and they're not the <laughs> best thing to look at, but they do the job. No, but that's true. All the all of your um, farmers and your master gardeners out there will tell you that it's the fertilization process that makes the difference. And um, yeah, you gotta have that. You gotta have it. You or, gotta have it. You know, I mean it in a natural way. <laughs> Use the natural fertilizer, people. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I was saying. You know, like I said, to kind of bounce off of that, you know, one other thing is we also need to be careful who we are letting fertilize, yeah. who we that's are letting right. prune us. That's right. That's um, good. We have to trust that's the master good. gardener mm -hmm. to provide us with the light, yeah. with the water, mm -hmm. with the um, pruning, and with the fertilizer. If we're allowing other people to uh, plant things in our lives mm -hmm. or put different types of yeah. i mean because you know, something not I, all fertilizer is good and, and well, that's absolutely and that was going gardening bring, too that yeah. was one thing and i yeah. learned when jennifer started planting these blueberry bushes and we were watching some videos and i didn't even realize it it along with mm -hmm. one other plant what is it a hydrangea yeah requires an acidic soil mm -hmm. um if you were to put them in a standard you know ph alkaline mm -hmm. soil it would kill them yeah. but for they wouldn't produce all right. other plants require a ph soil yeah. so you know we want to be careful not to let people put acid in our soil you right. know uh, unless you're a blueberry bush um, <laughs> or hydrangea yeah right so <laughs> i mean just just like i said the whole thought process you know when god gave us to me behind it was just making sure that we're yeah. getting the right things done to us mm -hmm. at the right times and yeah. it just goes back to trusting him the master gardener to mm -hmm. do in what he's doing yeah. and you know the way that we do that and we know his shears and his fertilizer That's and his right. light and his water is staying in his word and knowing mm -hmm. him yeah. um, and then not listening to or looking at the shears of the enemy or, yeah. you know, the fertilizer of the enemy because all, all of the enemy's tactics are used to stun our growth and to cause yeah. our branches to dry, dry and yeah. wither up and produce no fruit. Because if we're not producing any fruit, we have nothing to give back to the master gardener who's given us everything. Yeah, that's so good, honey. Very good. I was thinking that, you know, we don't, we don't always see the end result or, or 
the master gardener won't let us know what the plan is you know and so we do have to go through things that don't look like what we want them to look like but he sees the bigger picture and it made me think and that doesn't have to do with gardening but it made me think of when I was going through physical therapy and um, this wonderful therapist that um, that I went to she she did needling and so if you've ever been needled you know what I'm Ooh. talking about but the first time that she needled me she did not tell me what she was going to do and so when I encountered the needling I said oh my gosh what was that and she said I'm sorry but I could I didn't want to tell you because if I had told you what I was getting ready to you do, let me you, do it. you would have tent you wouldn't have let me do it number one or you would have tensed up your muscles and they would not have received the therapy as well which was a which was brilliant I thought and I think about that now you know if the if the Lord showed us okay I'm good this is where I'm gonna take you but in order to get there you're gonna to have to go through this this and this we said oh no 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 uh -uh. I think I'd rather just like stay here or go a different route I don't want to be a beautiful flower I'll just be a weed <laughs> 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 but he can't tell us everything because he knows that you know we we probably couldn't we couldn't handle it in our physical selves but um, we have to trust him and trust his plan. And, and that was beautiful, honey. Very well. Well done. Um, I just learned so much. And even now. No, my message. In the garden. I know. That's right. We, we are pulling from the master gardener. I tell you what. Even in the garden yesterday, things were coming to me. And I told him. I said, I'm just trusting the master gardener. I hadn't seen this on YouTube or read this in a book. But I just have this feeling right now that I need to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's from the, the master gardener. So that's where we need to pull. We need to pull from him because he knows the plan. And I want to be part of his team. Absolutely. Yeah. So... Well, we are out of time, so well, we love you no guys surprise. and hope you have a great yes. week. And enjoy if you need us, let day. us know. Please enjoy do. the day. Get outside and get you some vitamin D. Yes, vitamin D. Put you your hands in the but, dirt. Yeah, put your hands in the dirt. <laughs> get out there and play with your kids. Enjoy those pools, guys. And until next week, I guess we'll see you again then. Or the Lord comes and takes us home. We'll see you there. And I, oh, that'll be so sweet. All right. Love y'all. And see you next time. Bye.